Hi everyone, today you're going to be learning about Ramlethal Valentine. This big-headed brigadier is a monster of the mid-range, and it can both play a very dangerous keep-away game, as well as a terrifying rush down to really put your opponents in the mix. Whether you're playing as or against her, you will learn where she is at her strongest, her key combos to get the opponent right where she wants them to be, and even how to maybe take a burst or two. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now what's really exciting about Ramlethal is that while some of her buttons are from the get-go very obviously strong, her ceiling is also a mess and there's a lot that you can work with. Her key buttons when you're starting out are pretty straightforward, being the ones tied to her swords. Now, one sword is tied to her S button and the other her heavy slash. These will give extra range, better damage, and even influence some of her special moves. Now, the key spots on the screen for Ramlethal are when the opponent is about half screen and a third of the way towards a corner. When there is a third of a screen left to go to the corner, that is when a lot of her pressure really opens up because of her sword throw mechanic. But this is very dangerous because once you lose the sword, you lose some of those key buttons. These are done with quarter circle forward and then slash or heavy slash. The slash one will fly above ground level and the heavy slash riding along the ground. Now, both of these will go incredibly far unless you are hit by your opponent, in which case they will stop right in place. Ramlethal will have to walk over them to pick them back up, or it will take around five to six seconds for that to happen, at which time you are, of course, at a massive disadvantage. Opponents can even restrict you by not letting you walk back to where the sword might be, and regardless, you lose your biggest strength in neutral. Because of this, when you're starting out, I recommend do not throw the swords out unless you are at that three quarters to the wall, and it becomes either really easy for you to run in and keep the pressure, or if your opponent jumps out, you can at least back up into the corner and pick up your sword. Of her normals to control space, jumping slash, especially jumping back with slash, and standing slash are obviously fantastic. Standing with heavy slash is also really good too, as it goes even further. Now these are punishable on whiff, just barely. So these are your key buttons for a keep out game combined with her special of quarter circle backslash in the air, this massive two hit sweep that will also cause knockdown in mini strings, whether you're jumping up with a jumping punch or a kick. Now for her close range stuff, jumping up with punch is fine, as is standing with punch. In fact, it's a pretty decent anti-air and both of them are five frames. But the key ones, once you're starting to play the rushdown game is running in either with standing kick to do good tick throws or her close slash, because that will then let you go in with her swords at close range, threaten maybe recos or threaten in with a crouching slash. When you don't have meter, these are the key tools. And if you're not even close to the corner, be happy just taking a slash into heavy slash or just those basic hits. That's okay. Just cranking risk can be perfect because she has a lot of options to take advantage of once you're in the corner or have RC. Now you may wonder if you've played her, what about her flip in move? And that is pretty good, especially because it's plus if it lands on block and can alter your air momentum. But keep in mind, this is really easy six speed and really telegraph. So it can be pretty dangerous and you really don't want to risk blowing up because Ramlethal does not have a high guts rating and does take a lot of damage. She's not super squishy, but she's certainly below average. When you do have meter, however, doing her quarter circle back heavy slash is a massive get in tool. Highly punishable and neutral. Do not throw out without the meter to cancel because you won't even get that good of a reward. But with the meter to cancel, if it hits combo time, if it doesn't, you at least pretty much bring them to the ground and are now close enough to start a close slash into whatever mix you want. Now for these confirms, we're breaking it down into two specific things to look out for, which is where you are in screen position and how far are you from your opponent? Starting with the least exciting scenarios, if you are more than a half screen away from the corner and you just get a slash at more than half range. At this point, you really only will go for heavy slash after and just take that little bit of damage. If you have RC, you can Daro in and then Roman cancel as this lets you cover crazy screen. Even if you aren't comboing, it will get you into slash range. Then you can continue with these combos that would be really strong if they were your normal starter. Either being a simple kick into crouching dust for a knockdown, or you can then go into the Rekka sequence to get a hard knockdown as well. Now, these Rekkas are a little finicky just because it feels like you could just randomly throw them out, but you do need to be kind of calm and go along with a steady timing. If you do it too eagerly, you might whiff. Now, here is a big thing. Being in range to do a crouching heavy slash, so either from your close slash or just going into it is great because if you go into Daro, this will pop the enemy so high up, allowing you to go in and get a kick and then your Rekka sequence. This 
this is really strong from anywhere, anywhere on the screen. Keep this in mind. If you are not coming close to the corner, Eureka is a really solid ender because it's hard knockdown and lets you push the opponent closer to the corner to now go for these important things. So once you are within about a third of the stage towards a corner, you instead of doing Daro can go for tossing out her quarter circle forward slash after a 2H. This will carry the opponent from a third of the screen all the way to the corner and bounce them up, allowing you to run in, pick up that sword and go for the easiest of combos, whether it be a standing close slash into another 2H into sword throw, or even if you're really antsy, just mashing the P button and you can get that wall break. But of course I wouldn't recommend that. If you get a counter hit, you don't even need the 2H for the carry. You can instead do that far slash and then that long reaching heavy slash into the grounded sword toss, the heavy slash one, and that will toss to the corner. You can then run in and do the same thing I had just mentioned, or you can just toss the other sword as the grounded one will bounce them up into range to be hit by the other sword and be juggled by the explosions and such. Now for comboing the heavy slash normally without counter hit into that toss, there's a rule of thumb to follow. If the opponent is from the middle of the hitbox further away from you and you're just poking, it will not combo. It can be blocked. It will combo if they are that close to you. However, in the corner, because they cannot be pushed back, hitting with just the tip, it will always combo as long as it's early in the combo scaling. Another really strong sequence to internalize for this third of the screen waypoint is a standing kick into forward heavy slash into the grounded sword throw. This is also really good if maybe you got that opener we talked about before with Daru to knock them up or even maybe a, you know, dust into Daru. And then if you're close enough, you go into this and then instead of ending with a Rekka, you now have a full wall bounce combo to break combo, combo, combo. <laughs> now, remember how I said that jumping punch wasn't always the best option? This is because jumping kick allows for certain routes such as this that will get you to not even get them close to the corner, but even convert from a wall break from mid screen. Her jumping dust, while not a good space move, is fantastic being a multi hit so you can jump in for it for blocks to then go into your grounded strings or as you saw with that, really carry the opponent and get them to the end. Now these things are all well and good, but you wouldn't hear people complain about her like you do if it weren't for a couple other final little chef's kiss things right on top that really make her terrifying to fight. Starting out, she joins Kai as one of the pseudo grapplers of the game. She has an incredibly scary mix she can start putting you in with just a decent tick throw with her 2k allowing you to reset them to standing. But after doing this 2k, you can do your sword toss if they're close to the corner or run in with a close slash or crouching slash and just start up these very scary moves because they are quite active in their hitboxes and she doesn't even need to get into throw range to threaten with them. Her rekkas are incredibly dangerous pressure. You can put them in as quick as you want to keep them airtight or they can be delayed for frame traps, making them really scary for the opponent to try and punish even though they are minus. There is a very complex technique that it will take time to learn, but you can dash cancel these and then get another special move out, such as restarting the Rekka chain or even cancel the Rekkas into her sword tosses, which are part of her very advanced combos. This can even be canceled into her super moves, such as her infamous double quarter circle forward slash, which scales damage depending on how many swords you have and does so much. Fantastic finisher at any time that you can get it out. The second special must be inputted within three frames of the dash, so it's a very quick motion. This will take time, don't beat yourself up, but damn, it does feel really cool when you get it. But tick throws wouldn't be enough to strike true fear if it weren't for the fact that these swords and their explosions that they have in the corner coupled together can be devastating for someone to fight when they don't know how to fight against them. People with no ram knowledge will see that they are blocking a sword in the corner and just accept that there's a block. But there's actually the ability to, if you're just raw blocking it, punish a Ramlethal who's running in. And a lot of characters, except for big boys like Nagori Yuki or Potemkin, can run right under the aerial sword. Both of these putting Ramlethal in a position where she is being comboed away from the corner and away from her precious resources. However, the beauty of these swords is the fact that you don't have to be so committal. You can sit back and throw out your standing far slash or heavy slash to see what they will do. Remember that the swords will only halt if you are hit. If you are blocking, they will still explode on the wall. If they try and jump and air dash out with maybe a move, you can 6p to force them vastly back to the ground and then throw out your sword to let the explosion cover them on wake up. During this time, you can dash in and get a close slash into crouching slash and you will pick up your previous sword again. And now the games begin. Doing enough moves will push you away from your opponent so that when you throw out your sword, they are forced to make a choice. Do they want to jump out? In which case you can rise and meet them with a jumping slash because the sword you threw was heavy slash riding along the ground. If they try and run out, you can opt for a stand 
standing slash, or if you're really worried, you can go for a standing kick. If they decide to take the block, you run in and you restart this whole sequence again. Getting a grab in the corner is also phenomenal as it leaves you close enough to OTG them with close slash. Now you are going to be punishable if you try and throw a sword from this, but this is a great knowledge check. If the opponent does not punish you throwing out a sword after an OTG close slash, that means that you have complete free reign with them in the corner. They are probably going to try and jump out because they don't know when they can punish you. Likewise, if you predict the opponent will try and wake up grab or wake up buttons you after you OTG them, instead of taking the time like most characters would to dash in for their follow-up hit, Ramothal's sword is so big that you can just stand and do a far slash. If this hits, while in the corner you're close enough to then go into heavy slash into your sword toss and hit, there you are, full combo again. If they start to wisen up to this, you can throw a sword right away so that the explosion is ready for them on wake up. Now this is the true key to starting off her corner gameplay because this lets you block even reversals. You can just run in and block and let the swords start the block string and then if they try and do a reversal, you'll block it and punish and if you see that the sword hits, you can go for close slash and begin everything you're looking for. Trying to burst will also not work against this because you're blocking and if you do enough of the sword swings that it pushes you far away, yet another instance where burst will not hit you and the sword's explosion or just your range will let you start the combo anew. All right, so that should lay down a good foundation for your corner game. So let's put everything together into a game plan and fill in the gaps with final little bits of tech to make your Ramlethal flourish. When we start off the round, depending on your read on the opponent, you can either jump back and keep a lot of space with your slashes and play a keep out game, or you can jump in and already start putting on the pressure with close slash, standing kick, whatever you got. You can do frame traps with your Rekkas and remember they will build up a good bit of meter, but once you have meters when the real fun begins, Roman cancels will make all of your special moves safe and you can even create new pressure strings using your slash and heavy slashes, throwing out the sword along the ground and Roman canceling with it to go in with your sword and take advantage of the plus frames after your opponent blocks. Ideally with all of this, you've been pushing them to the corner and you can go into those really scary follow-ups. As you approach the three quarters to the wall spot, hitting them with the grounded sword throw might not give you a full combo, but it will still keep your turn as when they roll and stand up, they will be covered by the explosion at the location, allowing you to run in and pick up the sword and start everything that we talked about. Don't forget that if you throw the sword against the wall and you run in to fake a grab, you can always back ash and then whiffing the throw on you will get punished by the explosion of the sword. And then that's another full combo by going into the higher sword throw. If you are ever scared and you've lost your swords and they're very far away from you, you can always go into your super laser super, which is nigh unpunishable as now it guard breaks and it will return both your swords to you. If you have 100% meter, you can even Roman cancel and engage with the blinding ray of light and the swords will reappear with you the moment it concludes. Don't forget the power of Daro for knocking the opponent up, but do keep in mind the scaling on it is very severe. So 2k 2d into it, you won't get that good follow up. And if it's near the end of the combo, it pretty much won't lead to anything. Charge dust is a really good follow up after the explosion of throwing out your slash sword in the corner because it will knock the opponent really high up and give you time to go into maybe a standing kick or whatever quick follow up. And those are great because it lets you have your high damage, massive sword swing as your finisher to break the wall. Speaking of this, if you ever grab someone and toss them to the ground and you only need a little bit of damage to kill, this sword swing is a massive trade. Instead of going for your tick throws or OTG setups, you can cash out on a whopping chunk of damage. Finally, if you have the ability to use your super to break the wall, you better do it because of course this does more damage, but with the combination of hard knockdown to guarantee a block string and positive bonus with her recos, you pretty much guarantee a RC to be created and you have already shoved your opponent to the wall. You have freely put yourself back into this position and you still have some positive bonus left. Ooh, okay, that is everything for this overview. You now have the base fundamentals to play Ramlethal's core game plan and understand what she's going for when you're up against it. This took quite a couple iterations to make because she has so many options with her vast ceiling that it was a challenge, albeit a fun one, to identify her core building blocks to express to you. If you liked it, please like it because it helps it spread to even more people that are trying to learn just like you and helps the channel grow, which is really dope. And if you want to stick around, I do community votes to see which guides you all want to see next. So if there's a character you want to learn, just like this tall lanky man, you can check my channel and that one will be there. And if the character you want to learn isn't, you can always vote on it and hopefully we can make that happen. That's it for this. Take care. I'll catch you next time. Peace.